So in today's video, I am going to discuss about certain databases and these are databases which are created by certain firms which seek to classify journals and to select journals. So these databases are the Web of Science and Scopus. So you must have heard of these databases if you are in the research community and you are a PhD student or a master student or a faculty. Now let us look at each of these databases. If we look at Web of Science, that is created by a company named Claire White and this is based in the US. And essentially what this company does is that it sifts through a plethora of journals and then comes up with a set of journals which are considered to be relatively good. And in this process, both qualitative and quantitative criteria are used. Similarly, there is one more database known as Scopus. And this is primarily created by the publisher Elsevier, which is based in Netherlands. And essentially, this database also does the same thing in that it sifts through a variety of journals and comes up with a set of journals. So you may have heard of phrases such as is this journal part of the Web of Science database or this journal part of the Scopus database. And if this is so, then this journal has passed a particular set of tests and is likely to be a higher credibility journal. Now, some of the things which these databases look at are the citations of the paper. So this is one of the most important things is that how the papers published in these journals have been cited in the past and are being cited currently. They also look at various quali qualitative measures such as the editor of the journal, the peer reviewing system and the way the peer review is performed and this should be mentioned on the web page. The public description of the peer review system, regular publication of the journal, geographic distribution of authors and the people who supervise the journal, and the web page of the journal and so on. So essentially, there are of course many more criteria which are used in coming up with these journals which are considered to be good by these two particular databases. And one of the facts is that the journals which are vetted by these databases tend to be relatively good compared to a plethora of journals which are out there. So it has become too easy to start a journal and solicit papers and actually publish whatever comes to you in return for money. So this has created this problem of the so-called predatory journals, which essentially act as predators on simplistic and neophyte researchers who may want to get their work published. So these researchers typically write some very simple paper with an improper literature survey, with results which are not very good, with plagiarized content and so on. And then they want to get this paper published. And then they are out there looking for some place where they can publish this paper. And this particular race has been created by the fact that many universities and research institute institutions have made paper publishing a necessary condition for promotions, recruitment decisions and so on. So to take advantage of these type of people, these predatory journals have come up where essentially people can submit paper and then these papers can get published in return for a reasonably large sum of money. Now, one of the problems is that these journals do not follow the peer review process. They're moral standards are very low and they also may not have reg regular publication schedule. The editors of these journals may not be very proper persons and so on. So again, one of the things which people try to do is they try to look at the journals which are covered by Web of Science or Scopus and then try to publish in these particular journals so that they know that their paper is being published in a decent journal. So now if we compare these two databases, I would say that Web of Science is more restrictive than Scopus. And Scopus actually allows somewhat more number of journals to be part of its system. 
and Scopus also changes the journals every now and then. So there are some journals which are dropped off by Scopus every now and then. Whereas Web of Science is more strict in terms of the journals it takes and is also more stable in terms of the journals it keeps. So the first point of choice would be to go for a journal which is part of the Web of Science system. It is also sometimes known as the Web of Knowledge. And if you find the journal to be part of Web of Science, then you can be quite sure that this is a good journal. Now, if not, then you can look at Scopus and find out if the journal is part of the Scopus system. Now, if the journal is not part of the Scopus system also, then I would say you should be a little bit careful about this journal and probably you should not submit your paper to this journal because you may not know the outcome of this situation. The journal may in fact be a predatory journal or it may sometimes be a new journal. So you need to find this fact out that whether this is a new journal being brought out by an established publisher or by an established society, then it will not get into the system of Scopus or Web of Science for some time because essentially it does not have any history. So the journals need to have a history of a few years before they can get into these databases because the history will tell you about the impact factor, about the papers published, about the review process, about the people who are running the journal and so on. Now, one third aspect which is often not considered by new researchers is that the typical selection committees often give more credence to society journals and they really do not bother much about the impact factor and so on. So many new researchers get obsessed by impact factor and therefore they try to publish their paper in high impact factor journal not considering the fact that their work may be relevant to that journal or not. So for example, if we look at many society journals, let us look at societies which you may know. For example, you have the Royal Society of UK, you have IEEE, you have SIAM for mathematics, you have APS and so on. So essentially these are bodies of people who have got together and essentially they have formed a society to grow the professional field. So what happens with these society journals is that they are considered to be very thorough and if you have published papers in typical journals which are brought out by commercial publishers and in journals which are published by societies, you will often find that the society review process is very strict in many cases. And this is because the societies often tend to be rather old fashioned in their thinking. The peer review process is quite strict. They often require that the paper be vetted in some conference before it is submitted to a journal and so on. And in many fields actually, the publications in these society journals is considered more important or more prestigious than publishing in a typical journal with a higher impact factor. So for example, let us say if you are working in the field of signal processing. Now, typically the journal, the IEEE transactions of signal processing will be considered to be a top journal in the field. Now, beside this, you may also publish in a journal signal processing or various other journals and all these journals are also considered good. But typically among many of the people in the field, the transaction journals will be considered to be very good and a series of papers in the transaction journal also becomes a path to become a fellow of these particular bodies. So if you are trying to become a senior member of the IEEE or a fellow of this system, then publication in the transaction journals will be more useful. Similarly, if you are looking at the CIAM journal on scientific computing, if you are in the field of applied mathematics, then if you want to make a significant contribution to the field and you are quite a big expert in the field, then this journal would be good for you. Of course, it's very difficult for neophyte researchers to publish in these journals straight away without the help of a good supervisor or without a good background in the subject because these journals often require you to put the work in the context of the prior research in a very thorough manner. It's not that that's not true for Web of Science and Scopus journals. But there I would say the system is less rigid in terms of some of these parameters. And again, what happens in many of these journals is there is a huge variety of journals 
which are in these databases. So again, the society journals will also be part of these databases such as Corpus and Web of Science, but also many more journals published by commercial publishers and different bodies will also be part of these databases. So one of the things these databases let you do is to figure out the citations of papers. Also, you can get access to the abstracts of papers and so on. But to some extent, you can get abstracts of papers and references also in Google Scholar. But one of the things these journals provide you or these systems provide you is that they vet the situation in a better manner. So they try to make sure that the person who is being profiled in Scopus or Web of Science is a legitimate person. And so there is no mixing between two persons with the same name. So very often this is tried by using institutions and so on. So typically when I see with aspects of promotion or with selection committees, people give more credence to the Web of Science. So the statistics in terms of Web of Science, whether it is the number of citations of a researcher or it is the H index and so on, are typically given more importance. Scopus is given the next level of importance. And this is because for most people, their edge index in Scopus is going to be more than in Web of Science because Scopus looks at a larger set of journals and so on. And again, if you go to Google Scholar, your edge index is going to be further greater than in Web of Science and Scopus because Google Scholar not only searches for all the journals within the database system of these journals, but also it looks at a plethora of uh, different places such as PhD thesis, annual reports, reports published by people and so on. And it also looks across various languages and so on. So it is more of a search of the web. So again, these are some points I had for you today that it is of course a good idea to publish in a journal which is vetted by Web of Science or Scopus. And also it's a good idea to publish in a society journal. So if you are in a certain field, find out the society of that field and then you can aim to publish some of your papers in the society journal and the remainder of your paper in the Web of Science or Scopus journal. And again, I hope this video is useful to you and it will remove some of the doubts which many people have in terms of journal selection and the confusion which is there between Scopus, Web of Science and society journals. Thank you very much for listening to me and I'll see you in a later video.